What's up guys, welcome back to the Swift channel, Max Codes. Today, I'm gonna show you how to use UI View Property Animator so that we can get an effect like this. Now you can apply this to anything. You can do it to image view blurs, UI blur effect, UI visual effect views, pretty much anything, right? Now this video is gonna be short and concise and it's gonna show you how to use this so that you can use it with anything you want. Now if you're curious about animations, you probably know that I am working on a course right now for advanced animations, right? I'm not, I haven't released it yet, but that'll be linked down there. You by no means have to take it. I'm just throwing it out there because I know some people will genuinely benefit from it, right? Okay, so let's just go ahead and get started and create this project today. I'm just gonna drag over this empty project that I just opened up. So just a blank project, uh, go ahead and open up a blank project and we will be ready to go, all right? So first thing we really wanna do is we wanna put a slider on the screen, right? Like we want a slider there. This is my physical device. It's just that the simulator kind of lags this. So it's easier to show on my device. So if it's lagging your simulator, it probably still works the same. It's just that it's the simulator. So I would suggest building it to your device at some point. All right, but it shouldn't matter either way. All right, so what we're gonna do is set up a slider on the screen, okay? We're gonna do this with programmatic auto layout. It's gonna be like five lines. It's gonna be super easy. Let's just say let slider is equal to UI slider. And then we'll say slider dot translates auto resizing mask and constraints is set to false. The reason we're setting this to false is so that we can use programmatic auto layout without using a frame or without using auto layout in storyboards, okay? Next thing we'll do is we will anchor it to the center of our X, X axis, okay? So we'll say slider, but first we have to add it. So we'll say view dot add sub view slider. So once you get those three lines, let's continue. We will say slider dot center X anchor dot constraint is equal to this first constructor that returns a constraint that defines one item's attribute as equal to another. We will say slider dot center X anchor, sorry, view dot center X anchor. And it says a layout anchor representing the horizontal center of the views frame. And then we will activate it. Okay, now let me explain this. We're basically just saying, hey, take the slider and place it right in the middle of our X axis on our view, okay? So it's right in the middle here. Next thing we wanna do is pull it from the bottom, right? So we want it to be equal to the bottom anchor minus about 100. So we'll say slider dot bottom anchor dot constraint is equal to this first constructor view dot bottom anchor. And then we'll put a comma and say constant. I should have chose a different constructor, but we can just type it out. This is what I usually do. Put a comma and say constant minus 100 dot is active is set to true to activate that constraint so that it actually works when we compile our app. Okay, so this is great, but it's not really gonna appear because we don't have a width or height on our anchor or on our slider. We don't need a height because of the default state that the kind of slider exhibits because it's basically always looking like that, right? So it has a default height. So we can just give it a width anchor and we should be good to go. So let's say slider dot width anchor dot constraint is equal to constant. And it says returns a constraint that defines a constant size for the anchor's size attribute. Now, what you could do here is you could say 200 and it'd be 200 pixels wide, or you could say 100 and it would be only 100. Or what I like to do usually is just say something like view.frame.width and then minus like 50 from it, right? Let's activate it. And let me explain why I did that, okay? While it's compiling. So the reason I used view.frame.width minus 50 is simply so that it is less than the entire width of the screen, but not by a lot. Now you might be wondering, okay, why though? Like, like what makes it centered and stuff? And that's where center X anchor comes in. By having a center X anchor and a width anchor of almost the size of the screen, it's gonna center it pretty perfectly. Okay, so let me just run my, okay, there we go. It's been, it was taken forever. You can now see on the bottom here, we have this slider, okay? So when I built it out the first time, you might've noticed it was more in on each side. That's because I said minus 100. So you can do something like minus 150 instead of minus 50, and you'll see it just kind of pulls it in more, which is pretty obvious. Okay, now that we have a slider on the screen, we're now ready to learn how to use the slider to get a value out of it. And then I'll show you how we can combine UI view property animator with that value to basically change the background color based on the completion of the slider, okay?
So let's go ahead and let's write a function. Let's say add objective C file private func, not fucking, <laughs> handle slider changed. And then we will take in the slider as a parameter because that's how targets work. And then we're just going to print the slider dot value. Okay, now this function is not really going to do anything until we hook it up to the slider for all events. So what we'll do is we'll say slider dot add target. And if you've used add target before, you know that you typically use this for a button for something like touch up inside. Let's say self and for selector, we'll say self dot handle slider changed, which is why we used add objective C. Now you can get rid of that parameter or you can leave it there. Either way, it's going to take in the slider. I accidentally called it slide. You can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it slide because that's what I called it here initially on accident. So I'll just say slide dot value. Okay. And then for control event, this is where you typically say something like touch up inside and you'll see there's all these options, right? Now for a slider, it's clearly not going to be something like drag exit or touch up and then release inside or touch down repeat or something like that, right? We just want to simply detect this for all values. So we'll say dot all and we'll say events. So it's just going to say, okay, if you're touching it, we want to print out the value. Okay. Let's go ahead and compile our application. And then we now should see it in the console, in the debug console, printing out the value whenever we're touching it and dragging it. Okay. And then that's where we can basically change the fraction complete on the animator to make the screen actually change. Okay. But you probably don't know what that is yet. Right? So let me show you and you'll see it's printing out now, which is really cool. You'll see it's at zero. And then when I drag all the way, it slowly gets to a hundred or one, right? Fully complete. Okay. So I, I sure, I sh I'm sure you understand what's going on there. Let's talk about UI view property animators. So we're going to define our property animator here by saying let animator is equal to UI view property animator. And it says a class that animates changes to views and allocate and allows the dynamic modification. And if you can't read the rest of that, or we clearly can't cause it's cut off, we can just allocate it and then we'll command click it in just a second. So I'll do that and let's select one with just curve. So this second one, and then the duration is going to be, let's say a second. And then let's say dot linear. And the duration doesn't really matter because we're going to be using the slider anyway. And then we'll say nil for animations. Okay. So let's command click on UI view property animator and go ahead and hit quick help. And you don't have to do this. You can just watch me do it. And it, you can see all of the information about the class. So that's a really useful tool. Let me know if that's something you just barely learned of because of me in the comments, because I feel like it's important. I show you small things like this every now and then I'm not going to read this all, but you can read it and get a get better understanding of this, or we can just use it right now. Okay. So now what we need to do is add some animations to this animator, which is actually very, very simple. Let's go ahead and go to our view to load here and we'll say animator dot add animations. And it says, add the specified animation block to the animator, hit return. And then we're just going to change the background color to something like cyan. So I'll say dot cyan. And then now when I compile our application, nothing's really going to happen yet because we haven't, <laughs> because we haven't really, um, done anything with this in the slider. Okay. So we just have to add one more line of code and we're done. All right. So that's compiling. And slider still works as expected. Let's go ahead and add that one more line of code and we will be done. Okay. So what we need to do is we just need to say animator dot fraction complete the fraction percentage complete. Let's command click and hit show quick help the completion percentage of the animation. So the value of this property is zero, zero at the beginning of the animation and one Oh at the end. So if we're printing out our slide value and it's going from zero, zero to one Oh, you can see that really kind of fits this, right? So point, the value 0.5 indicates that the animation is exactly halfway complete. So you can very clearly see that based on the value we set here, it's going to complete the animation based on the slider value. So it's really awesome. We'll say is equal to, and then we have to say CG float to cast slide dot value to a CG float because it's like a double or something by nature. Okay. We'll recompile our application and we should be done. Let's go ahead and see if this works and uh, we'll be on our way. Okay. 
Okay, so let's test it out. And you'll see it animates over to the completed color really smoothly and nicely. Now, the way I initially figured this out was by doing it with an image view. And it's actually really awesome. And doing it with a blur view to get that kind of Twitter header effect. So let me know what you thought of the video. And uh, if you want to check out that animation course, go ahead and click the link in the description. If uh, you're watching this video the day I release it, it's probably not going to be ready though. <laughs> so it won't be ready. So just keep checking back here on the channel as I upload more animation videos. I found the animation videos to be really popular or most more popular than my other videos. So that's why I'm making them. And I, I like them better. But yeah, leave a like, subscribe, and uh, let me know in the comments what you think. I will see you in the next video.